Hello dear friends, once again welcome to our Bible Reflection se Session. <coughs> we have already seen the important miracles accomplished by Prophet Elisha. And the last session we saw how he cleansed the minister of the king of Syria, Naaman, who was a leper. And the impact of that miracle. And now we go to chapter 6. In chapter 6, First of all, we find a small miracle accomplished by Prophet Elisha, which he had already analyzed. There we find Elisha causes the miracle by making an iron axe which fell off into the water, a deep water in the river. And he caused the iron axe float on the water, just like a piece of wood or plastic. And after this, we find some of the narratives given about Prophet Elisha. And the events narrated till the death of Elisha practically contains some important episodes or sessions where the prophet interferes in the political scenario of the kingdom. Prophet intervenes either to punish the evil deeds of the king or to protect the people by praying for God's intervention and sometimes causing miracles or by miraculous events. All this we will find here. And therefore it is very clear that Elisha is playing a very important role not only in the spiritual realm, but also in the political realm of Israel. Of course, this is something different from that of Prophet Elijah. We can say he did not intervene much in the political realms. But here, Elisha supports the king or punishes the king with great impact on the nation of Israel. And therefore, this is what we can see here. And in the coming chapters, we will see there are almost five or six political activities done by the prophet. 
and these political activities, if we analyze them as a whole, can be said to have the following characteristic features. First of all, they are a symbolic interventions in the realm of politics and they convey a prophetic message and secondly whenever Elisha intervenes the miraculous dimension is emphasized to an extent we can say overemphasized and it is often meant to glorify the person of Elisha and thirdly it is also said that these traditions about political affairs and Elisha's interventions in them are originating from popular traditions which were formed about Prophet Elisha and these were codified post probably after his death and it is sometimes said the miraculous elements were added later by the disciples of Elisha and so on. Therefore, at the moment, there may not have been much miraculous elements. But when we read it now, we feel so much of miraculous elements inserted there. And we can also see whenever Elisha intervenes in a political affair, it has also got a prophetic message which is to be conveyed. And this is very clear when we look into chapter 8. There we will find Elisha is really playing a prophetic role in the political camp. Okay, we will come to analyze it later. And now we go to chapter 6, as I mentioned earlier. And here, the given background is that of a war between Syria and Israel. And it is mentioned here that Elisha used to help the king whenever there was a need. Syria wanted, Syria was very strong at that time and wanted to attack Israel. And therefore, they always planned and set up a strategy how to attack Israel. And they wanted to take Israel by surprise attack. And therefore, they had some plans, but the plans were kept secret. And they would be planning to come and encamp on a particular place and then go to attack the army of Israel. Sorry, army of uh, uh, the army of Israel. And whenever the Syrian king planned something, Elisha could know it because of his, okay, the, now his rapport with God. And Elisha would inform the king of Israel that the Syrians are coming to attack them. Therefore, you go and 
n cam in such and such a place and hence Syria could never defeat Israel and when the plans made by the Syrian king were thwarted or destroyed in this way the king began to think there is somebody in the palace of the Syrian king who is really working as a spy he is the one who divulges the secret decisions made by the king and commanders to the king of Israel and hence the king of Israel and his army kept always away from their attack <coughs> and hence he called to the the people in palace and the Syrian king asked to them who is it that conveys our secret decisions to the king of Samaria and he was very angry and then one of the servants said to him it is nobody from the palace but it is the prophet Elisha who is informing the king of Samaria about our movements, about our decisions. And naturally the king of Syria got very angry and he sent a very big army to capture Elisha the prophet. And it was informed that he is in a town called Dothan. And the army was coming to capture him. And that's the story we will find in chapter 6. And when the army was coming, it was a very huge army with uh, chariots, horses, and so on. And the servant of Elijah happened to see the approaching army and he was terrified and he informed Elisha that the Syrian army is approaching and Elisha said, okay, we are also our army with us and the servant had a vision where a heavenly army was stationed against the Syrians who are approaching and therefore he was very confident and now we see the Syrian king and others they approach and the servant of Elisha asked him and also we find the king of uh, Israel happened to hear about the story and now when they were approaching to capture Elisha. Elisha prayed to the Lord that the people of Syria may go blind and it happened so. The people were in blind. They were all, they all became blind. They could not see where they are. And then the servant of Elisha asked him, Okay, shall we kill them? 
no he said okay the you lead them to the king and the entire army of syria that had come to attack elisha and capture him now they have become blind and they want to go to and they were led to samaria the capital of the king and when they were in the in the capital city and their eyes were opened and they saw that they are already trapped in the capital city of samaria and they became afraid and the king of israel asked elisha shall we kill them but elisha said no you should not harm them then what should i do with them the king of israel asked and elisha said something interesting you give them nice food to eat and they were all given very good food to eat and then they were given permission to go back to damascus or syria and the people who were already terrified of the thought of approaching death at the hands of the israelite king are now happy and they returned to syria and it is said thereafter they did not come to attack israel for a very long time therefore the hatred attitude was met with an attitude of charity which really converted the thought of the syrian king and the commanders and thus we can see through the intervention of elisha they were able to overcome the attack of the syrians therefore this is the story that is narrated mainly in chapter 7 and in second in the second part of chapter uh, chapter 6 okay um, we are still in chapter 6 in the second part of chapter 6 we find after some years ben hadad the king of syria came to attack israel and israel was already suffering from a very severe famine and drought and now the king of syria comes with his army and surrounds samaria and practically there was no grains or flour available in the market if something was available they were to be given so high prices which the people could not aff- afford to and that was the situation and at this time we find the king of israel was thinking i can do something for this suffering people suffering due to po- uh, um, hunger and poverty and only if the god of israel in his compassion 
gives us something to eat and to drink. Therefore, that is his way of thought. And now, the as the king was walking on the top of the city wall, a woman called out to him and he naturally thought she is calling for his uh, calling for some help to get some food or something and then he made the comment only if Yahweh gives something I can give you I don't have anything with me and hence we find uh, at this time the woman said my lord that is not the case I made a contract with my neighbor neighbor woman and according to which we agreed that okay one day we would kill my child only infant and eat it because there is nothing else to be eat and both had agreed that the next day the child of the second woman be killed and eaten but now the second woman says I will not kill my child and I cannot do that I cannot kill my child and eat it this was so shocking for the king because how can such a thing take place and that shows the gravity of the situation nothing is available mothers kill their own infants and eat the flesh of the children and from the story itself we can understand what a terrible situation they were facing and then the king said okay all this has happened because of because of the words of Elisha and therefore the king was angry towards him and from this story one thing is clear the king practically wants that the drought and famine situation be taken away but instead of trusting and trusting in the lord and praying to the lord to take away the famine he is finding fault with the prophet and he is not able to understand why God has punished Israel with such a famine and drought. That is because of their sin. That they don't understand. Instead, they are just rebelling against the word of God and God's prophet. Of course, it will not have anything good in effect and that is the story narrated in chapter 6 okay now we go to chapter 7 and there we find the famine is so severe there is nothing to eat and so on and therefore all the people of Samaria are starving so greatly and there was no food available 
and if something is available the price was so high and that was the situation we can see and it is the given background in chapter 7 and during this time of the famine the people were so horrible um, okay terrified and they were afraid now they are going to starve there is nothing there available to eat and at this time a story is narrated here in chapter 7 there were four lepers who were sitting at the city gate of Samaria asking for arms but since the people had nothing with them these lepers also got practically nothing to eat and now they make a decision if we sit here we will die and therefore we will try our luck. Let us go to the camp of the Syrians and probably they may give us some food. And if they do not give us the food, but they want to kill us, that is also fine because if we remain here, we will die of famine. If we go there, we may be killed by the Syrians. Both are alike. And therefore, courageously or gathering courage, they went to the Syrian camp. And when they approached the Syrian camp, to their surprise they see the camp is totally empty. There is nobody there. But horses and donkeys remain there. Provisions are kept there. But nobody is seen there. They went around the camp and saw even ornaments, gold and silver, left. And now these people, they stole all the ornaments and hid all these in some places and then they ate and drank and then they had a feeling, okay, the people in Samaria are starving. If you do not inform them, we are committing a great sin. And therefore, they hurried back to Samaria and informed the guards there at the gate. And the guards informed the king. And the king at the same time had another thought. And the thought was mainly this. Whether this is a military tactic that the Syrians have prepared for us to trap us or whether something else has occurred. The king was in a great dilemma. What to do? Anyhow, the commander with him said, okay, let two chariots with the horses go to the camp of Syrians. And here we also should remember another story. When the king came to Elisha and said or narrated about the pathetic situation in the city, Elisha said to the king and also the military commander with him, Tomorrow by this time, there will be plenty of grain and flour available. 
in the city and then naturally the commander in a sarcastic way replied even if the gates of heaven are open how can such a thing happen o prophet elisha and prophet said to him you don't believe in the word of god okay you will see whatever i said happen but you will not be able to eat from this grain and this incident had already taken place the previous day and in the night or by the evening time by the night fall uh, the story of the lepers occur and then here we see the people are already there and uh, the king sent the a few people of samaria and when they approach the camp they saw on the way and everywhere the belongings of the people their dress slippers and other things everything scattered and they were afraid what is or what has taken place and they came back to the king and reported okay even up to jordan everywhere they find these kinds of things scattered everywhere hence it seems that the syrians have deserted the camp and fled away and this is the story narrated there okay um the rest of the story we will deal with in the next session okay thank you almighty god we thank you for inspiring us to read your scriptures and to meditate upon them day and night relying on all your promises we humbly implore that the words of scripture may also be not just signs on a page but channels of grace into our hearts amen Thank <laughs> you.